Surviving a 14 hour flight or any flight over 10 hours is like, it can be difficult. Hey guys, I'm Stella. If you are new to my channel, I'm a New York based flight attendant traveling the world and taking you guys with me here on my YouTube channel. I have come up with my 12 best tips to survive a long haul flight. Little secret, if you're a flight attendant working the flight, time flies. It's so easy. You have so much stuff to do. It's like, wow, we're already here. Fun. 12 tips here, guys. Tip number one, do not wear makeup. I am telling you guys, just don't do it. Don't wear makeup. You get so dehydrated on a long flight that whatever is on your skin is just gonna suck right in and it's gonna look funky. Even us flight attendants, we're constantly touching up our makeup because it, it gets gross on those long haul flights. And if you're just a passenger, it's better for you to just put on a ton of moisturizer and let that all seep into your skin because your skin is just gonna suck it all up. So no makeup, no, no. Number two, wear yourself out before your flight. <laughs> Clean your apartment, go for a run, go for a hike, do an exercise class because you're gonna be sitting for a really long time. So it's gonna be best if you are worn out and pooped and just ready to relax. What I do to wear myself out before a long flight is I clean my entire apartment. I Swiffer, I'm vacuuming, I'm like Windexing every window around here. My apartment never looks cleaner than right before a trip. Number three, choose the right seat for you. If you know you're one of those people who is gonna pass right out at the moment you get onto the plane, choose a window seat. You are not gonna wanna be on the aisle or even in the middle seat, and people are gonna constantly be asking you, like, excuse me, excuse me, can you, I gotta use the restroom, I wanna get up. You don't want that to be you if you're a sleeper. If you're a sleeper, go on the window. If you're like me, I'm not a sleeper. I need to get up like every few minutes. I always choose an aisle seat. Even if you have to pay a little bit extra to choose like the right seat on the plane when you book your when you book your ticket, I say it's worth it. Honestly, I really do. Number 4, don't go to sleep right away. The first few hours of a flight are so busy. The flight attendants have the lights in the cabin turned to bright. We are going to go out, we're going to do our beverage service, we're probably going to give you a snack then we're probably gonna follow that up with a meal service and then probably another beverage service and then a trash pickup and then everybody's gonna be using the restroom, everybody's gonna be going up in the overhead bins, there's gonna be a lot of commotion and the lights in the cabin are gonna be bright. So after all of the service and everything is done, the flight attendants will turn the lights down and you really kinda of just see the cabin just kinda of mellow out. Not a lot of people are getting up, everybody's watching movies or screens start going off because people are passed out after the meal service. Yeah, so those two hours are just like a freebie. If it's a 12 hour flight, now it's a 10 hour flight. There you go. Number five, bring your own snacks. This wasn't gonna make my list, but recently I flew a carrier that I have never flown before and I didn't like any of the food. By the time I got off that flight, I was so hungry. I was like famished. I was like crawling to pick up my checked bag. No, I wasn't. You just really never know what they're gonna serve you on the plane. Sometimes they even run out. Like if you're a vegetarian, sometimes they can run out of the vegetarian option. Or if you, they only offer like beef and then a pasta and say you want chicken. <laughs> My favorite thing to pack are peanut butter M&Ms. I'm like obsessed with peanut butter M&Ms only when I fly. If you have nothing in your house and you're running late, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich will take you so far, so far. Number six is to drink tons of water. You've probably heard this so many times. I always tell people drink water, drink water. That's number one tip but it will help you so much. You do not realize how dehydrated you are gonna get on the flight. Moisture, hydration, it's all just like going out of your body. So you wanna keep drinking water. You don't have to drink a ton. You just drink one of those little glasses every few hours and you're gonna feel so much better. You're not gonna cramp up. You're not gonna be dehydrated when you land. If you don't keep drinking water on the plane, you'll start to feel, your skin will just feel funky. It'll just feel so not hydrated. A really good tip is to bring your own water bottle and then just ask the flight attendant to fill it up. That way you just always have water there and you don't have to keep getting up and asking them, can I have another cup of water? Number seven is to wear layers. This is so important. 
every airplane, the temperature is different. It's never the same. Sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's way too cold. But if you layer up, you're gonna be prepared for whatever. So I always suggest a t-shirt, a sweater, a scarf, and then an extra pair of socks. If you're hot on the plane, you can take your sweater off. If you're cold on the plane, you can keep the sweater on and then you can wrap the scarf around you or you can use all that extra, all those extra layers as a pillow. You pack stuff that's multi-purposable, right? Number eight, bring a pair of slip-on shoes or sandals or anything where if you are walking around the aircraft, you have something on your feet. Do not go into the lavatories with nothing protecting your feet. You're really hoping that that's water on the floor. I will tell you as a flight attendant, we drop food on the floor. Sometimes we don't see where it goes. We've dropped glass on the floor. We try our hardest to pick everything up. But if you are walking around the aircraft, you definitely need a pair of shoes. So most hotels that you go to give you like a disposable pair of slippers. They're like really thin, lightweight slippers and you can really just throw them away after one or two uses. Those are perfect for packing. They weigh nothing and they take up like zero space. So worst comes to worst, you got the hotel slippers. Number nine is to get up and walk every like one to two hours, as long as the seatbelt sign is not illuminated. It's perfectly fine for you guys to get up, walk around the cabin, stretch your legs, maybe like do a little loop. The only time that I don't mind lines for the restroom are on an airplane. It gives me the opportunity to be out of my seat. Hey, I'm. it's okay that I'm up, it's okay, because I'm waiting for the restroom line. That's why it's so easy on long haul flights for flight attendants because we're always getting up and we're doing so many things. We're picking up trash, we're getting more beverages for people, we're answering call lights, like time flies. Number 10, noise canceling headphones. I, I wouldn't even step foot onto a two hour flight without noise canceling headphones. It really just blocks everything out and just lets you focus on whatever you're watching. You really get into the movies. You have no other distractions. But if you're on an airplane, you have your noise canceling headphones, maybe you have your peanut butter M&Ms, you're gonna be set. Number 11, bring your own entertainment. Don't just rely on the airplane for your entertainment. Those little entertainment consoles, machines, they break. They always break. If they break, let a flight attendant know so we can inform the captain and he can inform the maintenance engineers that when we land to fix that. So then the next person's gonna have issues. A lot of airplanes now are going digital where they're gonna offer you free Wi-Fi so that you can like watch movies or listen to music or do whatever on your own personal device. You're gonna have to make sure that thing is charged, make sure it's working, make sure you can figure out how to connect to the internet. Two things that I recommend, one, a book. A book is never gonna run out of batteries and it's never gonna malfunction on you. And number two, a deck of cards. Recently on one of my, like, I think it was my working all day Christmas vlog, we were delayed for a few hours and we were in the crew lounge and we, one of the crew members brought out a deck of cards. We had so much fun, it perked us up. We were all like starting to get like real competitive, real competitive, and it was just a lot of fun. And tip number 12 is to bring a toothbrush and toothpaste. Flying a 10 hour flight is literally like sleeping that night and then waking up. When you get to your final destination, the, the lights on the plane are gonna go to bright. So everybody's gonna see everybody. People are gonna start saying, you know, excuse me, excuse me, can I, I gotta get my luggage, can you hand me that? You're gonna be interacting a lot with people. Then when you get off the plane, you're gonna have to go through customs, you're gonna have to get your luggage, you're gonna have to go flag down a taxi or get your transportation. You're gonna definitely want to brush your teeth before all that. You can do it in the airplane lab or you can wait till you get off the plane and go into the airport bathroom, but either way, toothbrush, toothpaste, you're welcome. All right guys, those were my 12 tips to help you survive flying a 10 plus hour flight, 15 hour flight, oh my gosh. Did you guys hear about that flight from, was it JFK to Sydney? It's like 18 hours? No, no, I don't even wanna be a flight attendant on that flight. Thank you guys so much for watching. Always be nice to your flight attendant and I'll see you next time.